because at the end of the day, I think my biggest problem with this game comes down to purpose, and that is there is no purpose to Genshin Impact. A debt for the credit card deal of 20,000 Singaporean dollars, thanks to his daughter spending it all on Genshin Impact. I've gone so far as get an email about someone pretending that they have cancer or even one of their children has cancer. Someone said, my child has cancer. Their only wish is to get gone you. That's just someone faking it, trying to get a character. To sum it up, Genshin is an amazing game that I can't recommend to anyone. Exploring a vast world for the first time is a magical experience for a lot of gamers. But for these open world games, it's not just the size of their maps that's huge. It's the cost to make them. While making their own open world role-playing game, the game company called Hoyoverse made a huge gamble. They spent over a hundred million US dollars to develop Genshin Impact, only to make it free to play. Genshin Impact is among the most expensive video games to be developed of all time. So if it failed, it might be the end end of Hoyoverse. What made this gamble even riskier was that before this, Hoyoverse only ever made mobile games, but Genshin Impact was being made for mobile and major gaming platforms. But the gamble paid off. In just two years since its launch, Genshin Impact made $4 billion. Its achievement was unlike anything the gaming world has seen before, but getting to this level of success wasn't always a smooth road. Before we start, I hope you guys have an absolutely beautiful day. So today we'll be looking at the insane world of Genshin Impact and the craziness of its community. The dangers of Genshin in real life. On September 28th, 2020, Genshin Impact was released, quickly rising to the top of every known ranking, downloads, revenue, awards. But in order to stay at the top, the game had to keep things fresh. Hoyoverse wasn't just looking to make a splash in the gaming scene, but beyond it as well. So on March 8th, 2021, Genshin Impact teamed up with KFC in China for the game's first ever collaboration. Genshin Impact characters dressed up for the occasion, promoting KFC combo meals that came with in-game rewards. During this time, players who bought a special KFC combo meal could redeem an in-game item called the Wings of Feasting. There was no other way of getting this item, so Chinese players went to their local KFC outlets in droves. The event was so successful that it became dangerous. With players overcrowding the KFC stores and a threat to public safety, police needed to get involved and shut down KFC establishments. Many camped outside of KFC stores just to be in the front of the line. In the end, getting the police involved was the right choice because the stores were so crowded, people started to commit crimes like stealing character display stands from the store. Amidst all the chaos, people started stealing Noel cutout. People that were successful in the Noel well cut out high started selling them online. Just a few months into Genshin Impact's release, it became so popular that crowds at real world events could not be controlled. So on August 29th, 2022, when Genshin Impact had a new collaboration with Pizza Hut in China, players should have already learned their lesson, right? Is that true that cops actually shutting down Genshin Impact collaboration event with Pizza Hut? That was the case. Once again, history repeated itself. Genshin Impact players crowded around the Pizza Hut stores, becoming a danger to themselves and the people around them. Police had to shut down some of the Pizza Hut joints for the same reason as last time, public safety. Even in Genshin Impact events outside of China, there was always new players causing problems. There was a girl in the Philippines who stole a cardboard cutout of Klee in the Hoyo Fest Cafe collab last December. She openly admitted to stealing it. But stealing is nothing compared to some of the horrible things some event attendees have done. 200 people had to evacuate a Genshin Impact event in Seoul, Korea, after someone tweeted that they would set off a homemade explosive there. The actions of these Genshin Impact players don't reflect the entire community as a whole, but this is what happens occasionally when a lot of players gather together in real life. Thankfully, from these in-person events, we couldn't find any reports of people ending up with lasting consequences. But that's only the beginning of what crazy Genshin Impact fans are capable of, because as you continue watching this video, some of these stories will make you question just how far they can really go. The Corrupt Sponsorships when Genshin Impact teamed up with KFC China for a collaboration, players in countries outside of China felt left out. So Hoyoverse came up with a plan. On November 25th, 2021, players from the global region finally had the chance to get the Wings of Feasting item from the KFC China collab. By teaming up with Genshin Impact Twitch streamers from around the world, Hoyoverse gave out the Wings of Feasting through their new web event called the Adventurers Guild on Twitch. Their plan was to get the player base to support Twitch streamers 
subscribers. On paper, this was a great move for the community, because players who bought paid subscriptions to selected Twitch streamers could get the wings of feasting, while streamers could get more subs. A win-win. But once again, it was too good to be true. While almost everyone loves eating KFC, not everyone loves Twitch streamers. A lot of players were upset that they had to spend money to subscribe to streamers that they'll never watch. But the real problem was what the streamers had to face. Twitch streamer Tectone exposed the contract offered by Hoyoverse for them to be an eligible streamer for this event. It's a two week exclusivity contract, which means you can only stream Genshin Impact for two weeks, no other games. And here's the thing for payment, zero, zero dollars. On top of not being paid, Twitch streamers were not allowed to accept other sponsorships or talk negatively about Genshin Impact. Other creators also spoke up against Hoyoverse's contract, resurfacing the community's anger toward the company. But amidst the backlash Hoyoverse was facing, innocent content creators were caught in the crossfire. Genshin Impact players flooded Twitter to attack any content creators who accepted the contract, threatening to unsubscribe from them. There's a lot of people in the Genshin community, smaller Genshin content creators, who reached out to me via Discord, Twitter DM, and they said that they are very anxious about this and that they're terrified that they, they accepted the program, right? And they're terrified about what's to come because of how Genshin community retaliated towards this. In the end, the Adventurers Guild on Twitch event divided the community instead of bringing them together. Hoyoverse never responded to the backlash from this event while streamers suffered the wrath of angry Genshin Impact players. Sadly, this isn't the only time that innocent creators had to pay the price for Hoyoverse's actions. The consequences of being a voice actor. So far, Hoyoverse's ambitious ideas led to real-world mayhem. But unlike the frenzy of Genshin fans at KFC, there's another service that delivers harmony with every meal, Cook Unity. Cook Unity is the first chef to you meal delivery service, made up of over 70 chefs who believe that great food should be for everyone, especially for you guys who spend a majority of your time working on the computer. Every week, award-winning chefs craft hundreds of globally inspired meals, and they're always delivered fresh, never frozen. And I can attest to that because when I opened the box, the meals looked incredible. Cook Unity chefs offer meals with over seven dietary preference filters, including vegan, paleo, and gluten-free options. The menu rotates every week, so there's always something new to try. So this one is the grilled grass-fed ribeye steak made by Brandon Keita in Los Angeles, California. Chef Brandon graduated from the Culinary Institute of America in Hyde Park in 2001, and I was blown away by his steak. It also passed my parents' test, so they're super picky, but I kid you not, they liked every Every single Cook Unity meal I had them try. To try them out yourself, go to cookunity.com slash visualventure50 or click my link in the description below and use my code visualventure50 to get 50% off your first order. The subscription is super flexible. You can pause, skip weeks, or cancel at any time. Thank you to Cook Unity for sponsoring this video. This is Anjali. Anjali got into voice acting in their teens. Like a lot of voice actors, Anjali's career started out with minor roles in different films and games. In 2021, Anjali auditioned for Genshin Impact and became the voice of a few NPCs in the game. But as Genshin Impact grew with more updates, so too did Anjali's career. Anjali kept auditioning for more roles in the game and eventually landed the opportunity to voice Dory, a character for Genshin Impact's Sumeru expansion. What originally felt like a dream come true, Anjali soon discovered that it would turn into a nightmare. What was supposed to be a new character's exciting announcement ended up to be a mob of upset players over the casting of Dory. The new map drew strong inspiration from South Asian and Middle Eastern cultures, leading some players to accuse Hoyoverse of engaging in cultural appropriation. Anjali faced criticism merely for providing the voice of one of the characters. After announcing that they were the voice of Dory, Anjali received inappropriate messages from angry players. At first, Anjali ignored these messages by blocking them, but as the hate grew, they had to turn off DMs. Anjali's story is just one of the many incidents where the Genshin Impact community directed their hate towards the voice actors. Zach Aguilar, the voice of Ether in Genshin Impact, called out players over the repeated harassment the voice actors got on Twitter after he hosted an official Genshin Impact livestream. The poor treatment Genshin Impact voice actors get from the community isn't exclusive to the English dub. Gui Niang, who voiced Kokomi in the Chinese dub of Genshin Impact, had to restrict her livestream because players 
were unhappy about the character she voiced. Some losers, some actual degenerates, went out of their way to harass the voice actress, the Chinese vo voice actress for the character, and end up having her like shut down harassment on her live stream. Even though all the complaints come from a vocal minority, it paints a bad picture for the entire Genshin Impact community. This ruins the experience for not only people who aren't toxic, but also voice actors themselves. They'll see what's been happening to voice actors throughout the years, and they won't want to voice act in Genshin Impact, simply because they don't want to get attacked and harassed by a community when they've done nothing wrong. In the end, Genshin Impact players attacking voice actors is just a symptom of a major problem brewing between the community and Hoyoverse, the company behind the game. In our next chapter, you'll find out just how far Hoyoverse goes to control the content in the game. The bubble diaper situation. On August 16th, 2023, Genshin Impact Update 4.0 added the new region of Fontaine to the game. While the community welcomed the new content with open arms, there was one feature that players found to be very annoying. When you swim underwater in the game, it causes a bubble effect to appear around their character's hips. The effect was noticeable and started to grab the attention of the Genshin Impact community. This effect was known as the bubble diaper. Many claim that its intention was to cover up the rear end of characters, and a lot of players found this to be distracting. And this ain't just on the female characters, no, this is on the male characters too. Fully dressed, well dressed, you know, not showing anything male characters. Unlike Western games, Genshin Impact has greater restrictions as a Chinese video game. While Hoyoverse has to follow the rules set by the Chinese Communist Party, their attempt to cover up in Genshin Impact appears to be a lot worse compared to other Chinese video games. With China's video game regulations growing stricter in recent years, players outside of China are worried that they'd also get hit with more rounds of cover-up similar to the bubble diaper incident. But it isn't just graphics. Players realized that their words were being censored too. It censors tank. I wonder why. Tank? <gasps> it actually does! The censorship wasn't just limited to words like Taiwan and Hong Kong. Even words that are important for in-game communication, like enemies, can't be seen. This list only appears to be growing. A study conducted on 200 different Chinese mobile games revealed over 180,000 blacklisted keywords. However, what truly aggravates the community goes beyond the in-game censorship. It's the persistent feeling that their concerns are constantly overlooked. Genshin Impact's Discord is notorious for silencing players, making it difficult for them to voice their opinions when it comes to problems about the game. Because Hoyoverse hardly addresses the community's complaints, players often use this lack of communication to justify their actions such as bullying innocent parties as we've seen with voice actors. But some problems would be bad for Hoyoverse to ignore because there was one incident that left hundreds of players with a permanently damaged game. The hack that destroyed the game. Even though Genshin Impact is mainly a single player experience, it does have co-op features. Players have the option to enter their friend's world, where they can assist with various tasks like tackling in-game quests and challenges for some engaging gameplay. It's all about shared fun, until August 2023. In what turned into a bleak chapter of Genshin Impact's story, teaming up in co-op mode suddenly became the one thing that you really didn't want to do if you cared about your account. During this period, Chinese players panicked. They realized that in-game objects like treasure chests were permanently missing. Some of these in-game objects were important for story progression and without them, they couldn't explore the rest of the game. The cause of these disappearing objects could be tied to one playable character, Kave. Some players used a third-party software to hack Kave, giving him an ability to permanently delete almost anything from the game, even NPCs, which erupted chaos between players. Chinese and English-speaking players alike took to online platforms, warning everyone not to enable the co-op feature. Once a Kaveh hacker deletes your game files, it's gone for good. Not even reinstalling Genshin Impact would bring it back. Some of the Chinese servers, videos have been going around showing Kaveh deleting stuff like chests, statues, NPCs, etc. While it looks hilarious, repairing or reinstalling your game doesn't fix it. But even with video clips circulating online, some Genshin Impact players thought that the Kaveh hack was fake. One player even recorded footage of them deleting 
objects with Nahida, a different character, only to admit later that it was fake. With so much conflicting information spreading around, nobody knew for sure if the Kave hack was real or fake. Except Hoyoverse. On August 28th, 2023, Genshin Impact's official Reddit account made a post revealing that the Kave hack was indeed real. In just a week after videos of the hack circulated online, Hoyoverse quickly fixed the hack. Thankfully, players who were affected by the hack had their accounts restored to normal. Hoyoverse also banned the hackers and are pursuing legal action against them. While we aren't sure what happened to the hackers, it's likely that they'll be punished pretty severely. Lawsuits aren't to be taken lightly, especially with Hoyoverse, because in this next situation, getting sued by Hoyoverse is comparable to being caught as an enemy spy. The $70,000 fine. We already learned in the previous chapter that Genshin Impact is mainly a single player experience with limited co-op features. But some players in the community take it far more seriously than multiplayer games. Major updates usually add new characters, so players want to know if it's worth spending premium in-game currency to unlock them. That's why a large portion of the community would do everything they can to find out what's happening in the next update. One of these people is Xing Hare, a Chinese Genshin Impact player. In January 2022, he got access to the Genshin Impact version 2.5 private beta test. After signing an NDA, Xing Hair was able to experience all the new features ahead of regular players. Wanting to share his new discoveries, Xing recorded his gameplay and shared it to his friend, but that was a terrible decision that cost him everything. His friend shared the gameplay online, breaching the NDA that Xing signed. Hoyoverse tracked down the source of the footage right back to Xing Hair and sued him for 500,000 Chinese yuan or about 70,000 US dollars. That's the fine you'd expect for someone caught spying in China. In a post he made online, Xing revealed how betrayed he felt because of his friend. About the leak, I've always been very careful. That friend I've known for years, I trusted him and told him not to spread it to outside sources, but I didn't think that I would get backstabbed today. Xing also revealed that he doesn't have the means to pay the fine worth $70,000. While we aren't sure what happened to him after he made this post, we're sure of one thing. Hoyoverse takes data breaches very seriously. Back in 2021, Hoyoverse made it clear that they weren't messing around, going after seven players with lawsuits each at around 70,000 US dollars for leaking unreleased content of the game. And just when the leaks wouldn't stop coming, in October 2022, Hoyoverse suffered a massive data breach. Not only were 36 weeks of upcoming content exposed to the public, but employee information was leaked too, which led many people people wondering, maybe it didn't take too much effort to actually breach Hoyoverse's security. A 4chan user in June 2023 leaked so much Genshin Impact artwork that the user even insulted Hoyoverse for their incompetence. You are a multi-million company, you could tighten your security, you do not however. Your company is so open to how easy it is to breach, so it's just a matter of time before somebody creates their own art book. You should try and get a profit at least. It turns out Hoyoverse's cybersecurity has been a problem since the very beginning beginning of Genshin Impact. Security options like two-factor authentication weren't available for mobile devices and on October 19th, 2020, not even two months into the game's release, hackers were able to steal player phone numbers through the Hoyoverse website. This issue was only fixed on November 9th, 2020, but it took them almost an entire year to finally add two-factor authentication in May 2021. Hoyoverse may be taking harsh action against those who leak confidential information, but it's nothing compared to what China would do to Genshin Impact creators who go against them. Because sometimes just making the wrong kind of Genshin Impact videos could land you in prison. 10 years in prison over Genshin Impact. On January 18th, 2022, Italian physicist Giorgio Parisi was on the verge of a major milestone in his life. He was about to receive his Nobel Prize from the Italian Senate over a Zoom meeting. But unfortunately, his achievement would never be remembered as an honorable moment, but instead, probably one of the most embarrassing moments in Zoom call history. Somebody managed to hijack the call and played an inappropriate video of Final Fantasy VII 
Prince Tifa Lockhart. This moment became a legendary internet meme overnight. But what a lot of people don't remember is that seconds before the Zoom hijacker was removed, he played a clip of Zhang Ling from Genshin Impact as well. While Zhang Ling didn't share the same meme status that Tifa did, this might have been for the best, because the animator for the Zhang Ling Not Safe for Work video was about to get into serious trouble. Shirakami, the animator, has a Twitter following of over 560,000 and rose to online fame with his inappropriate Genshin Impact animations. However, he mysteriously went silent and vanished from the internet on December 12, 2022. It wasn't until six months later that his fans would uncover the story behind his sudden disappearance. In July 2023, Shirakami was arrested in China for violating censorship laws. He could potentially face up to 10 years in prison for distributing and profiting off of inappropriate material. His Patreon raked in over 1,830,000 Chinese yuan or about 250,000 US dollars, which Chinese authorities deemed as unlawful. Shirakami's arrest struck fear in the community of Chinese NSFW creators. Some of them even deleted their accounts, afraid that they would end up the same way. Shirakami's story serves as a reminder that working on the wrong kind of Genshin Impact content could get you in trouble. But even if you're innocent, just working for Genshin Impact can be a problem. For one unlucky Hoyover staff member, her first day on the job was thrown into chaos thanks to the Genshin Impact community. The worst job ever. We've already revealed earlier in this video that Hoyoverse is infamous for not responding to their player base. But what if you had the power to change that? Janice rose to the opportunity to do just that. After five years of working at Bandai Namco Entertainment Asia as their social media and PR manager, Janice made a major career move. On September 28, 2021, she joined Hoyoverse as their new global PR manager. But on the first day of her job, Janice had to deal with gaming's worst PR disaster of all time, Genshin Impact's first anniversary event. For the Genshin Impact community, the anniversary event was the final straw that broke the camel's back. Throughout the year, Hoyoverse responded with silence whenever the community aired their frustrations toward earlier updates. So when the anniversary event was revealed and it offered players little to no changes, they were more upset than ever. Whenever the servers go down for maintenance, players are given an average of 300 Primo Gems as a form of compensation. You are getting more Primo Gems here compared to the rewards of the game's one year anniversary. The anniversary offered 100 Primo Gems, the game's premium currency, if they took part in the social media event. Clearly, this wasn't even given freely in game, and it's not what the community wanted. Once again, Hoyuverse ignored the player base's disappointment toward the anniversary, but this time the players fought back. Janice suddenly found herself dealing with the biggest protest in Genshin history. From 4.6 stars on the Google Play Store to 1.9 stars, Genshin Impact was getting review bombed. I mean, good grief. Look at all the negative reviews they've had over this anniversary event. And that's the crazy thing about it. It's so absurd. But it didn't stop there. Not only were players giving one-star reviews to Hoyoverse's other games, but even random apps like Google Classroom were left with angry reviews putting the blame on Genshin Impact. On platforms like Discord, mods were dealing with criticism of the anniversary event which made the community push even further by spamming the Discord server, flooding every channel with stickers. Janice wasn't just forced to clean up the mess from this anniversary event, it was the aftermath of Hoyoverse's lack of communication throughout the year. As one Redditor puts it, it's not the lack of rewards, it's the silence. Genshin Impact's community really crossed the line when Janice, on the first day of her job, became a target for the players as well. Comments on the article congratulating Janice for joining Hoyoverse had to be locked due to all the negative comments. Even the article itself was removed. In the end, the backlash was too much for Hoyoverse to handle. The company gave in and broke the silence, promising more rewards for the players. But at this point, it was too late. The community felt like these new rewards weren't given out for the anniversary, but were given out for damage control. Because of her experience at Hoyoverse, Janice left the company. For many, working at a big game studio like Hoyoverse can be seen as a badge of honor. But for 
Janice, it doesn't seem like she associates herself with the company, having removed any mention of it from her LinkedIn profile. Even after leaving Hoyoverse, the awful things that Janice had to deal with as their PR manager seem to have caused her to take a break from the gaming industry. But the horrible messages she received from the community are nothing compared to the cruel acts capable of some Genshin Impact players. Because a few of them would even take lives just for this game. A diehard fan's dreadful behavior. In our last chapter, you saw what happened when a company was completely out of touch with its players. This time, we're exploring a different angle, when players lose their grip on reality. On July 28th, 2023, a Reddit user named Snoo2612 made a controversial post on the Genshin Impact subreddit. The post talked about the toxic side of the Chinese Genshin Impact community, especially toward one playable character, Wanderer. The user explained how these fans went beyond the game, targeting not just fans of Wanderer, but also the character's voice actor, Lu Yin, during a live event, but it didn't stop there. Wanderer haters even went as far as doxing the writers behind the character. They reported Wanderer to the authorities for being a depiction of a war criminal. Unfortunately for them, both of these attempts ended up failing. When that didn't work, they crossed a serious line on a messaging app called Telegram, where one person shared very upsetting videos involving cats. So I can't go into full detail on YouTube, but since they were associated with Wanderer's in-game cat form, what I can say is that the cats sadly didn't survive. This was a harsh reminder of how intense fandoms can negatively spill over into reality. According to the Reddit user, the motivation behind these awful acts is simply because they don't like the Wanderer character. Many Chinese male players see him as a real enemy and not a fictional enemy. They are offended by his attitude, his talking pisses them off. The CN players are used to being flattered in a game world so they can't tolerate a brat. For them, doing everything they can to ruin real lives over Wanderer is apparently sending a message to Hoyoverse. When Snoo2612 made this post on Reddit, it was met with skepticism. Some Reddit users thought that there was no way that bad apples in the Chinese Chinese Genshin Impact community could be this toxic, but they were quickly proven wrong. Another Reddit user discovered that Snoo2612 was doxxed on Chinese forums after exposing the Wanderer controversy. Wanderer haters were calling Snoo a traitor to China and claimed that they found the Reddit user's real name. Snoo ended up making an update to their original post. In the update, Snoo apologized to Wanderer fans for making the Reddit post. Additionally, they asked those engaging in doxxing to refrain from targeting the woman in Snoo's Twitter profile, clarifying that it was not a photo of themselves. It's hard to believe why some people would commit such disgusting acts over a fictional character. It may be just a small minority of the player base, but hopefully this is the darkest the Genshin Impact community gets. Video games are meant to be fun. There might be some things that we're not happy about, but there's never any justification to hurt others. Our voices matter, but we have to communicate them in the same way we'd want others to listen to us. Because two wrongs don't make a right. Visual Venture. Wait, before you go, click this playlist right here to watch more dark internet documentaries because the algorithm will promote my channel more if you guys watch multiple videos. Thank you guys so much and have an absolutely wonderful day. Peace.